In this video, I will be making the organoborane compound 9BBN at alpine borane. 9BBN, sometimes also called banana borane, is a useful hydroboration agent that is highly regioselective in its addition to alkenes, which is useful for making 9BBN derivatives that are used in Suzuki couplings. For example, if we have this alkene, it will add to the terminal position, so it will not add here, but only here, which results in this product. Now either this molecule can be used in a Suzuki reaction to add whatever in place of the borane or cleave to form a terminal alcohol. 9BBN can also react with alpha pinene to make alpine borane, which is a stereoselective reducing agent for ketones. The reduction of a ketone to an alcohol can produce a chiral center. If that is the case, alpine borane is able to favor either the R or S configuration. For example, if we react alpine borane that is made with 1S levopinene with levomenthone, it will favor the S configuration for the chiral center and produce dextroneomenthol. This type of reaction is called a midland reduction and is usually done with ketones that have a low steric group next to them, like an alkyne or a nitrile. This will increase the selectivity of the reaction, though it can still work with ketones that are slightly hindered. So that is what I will try in this video. So I set up a hot plate, a heating mantle and a 3-neck flask. I then attach a short path distillation apparatus. I attach a dropping funnel and I have put in a stir bar. On top of that, I add 40 mL of dry 1,2 dimethoxy ethane. Then with a syringe, I add 12.5 mL of borane dimethyl sulfide below the liquid surface. I stopper the flask and then add 15.3 mL of 1,5 cyclooctadiene to the dropping funnel. Since the reaction mixture should maintain a temperature between 50 and 60 C, I replace the stopper with a thermometer adapter to make sure that the temperature stays between that. Now that everything is in place, I can start the reaction. So I started heating the mixture lightly and dropwise add a 1,5 cyclooctadiene from the dropping funnel to the flask. This reaction is slightly exothermic, so I add it at such a rate that the temperature stays between 50 and 60 C. In this reaction, two borane molecules will react with two 1,5 cyclooctadiene molecules to form 9BBN while leaving behind the dimethyl sulfide, which will distill off during and after the reaction. The compound is fairly unique in that it is a hydride bridge dimer. In general, a hydrogen with two bonds is cursed, but in this case it is relatively stable. When all of the 1,5 cyclooctadiene has been added, I remove the dropping funnel and replace it with a stopper. I then swap the position of the stopper and the short path distillation apparatus. Now I continue heating and increase the temperature to make sure all of the dimethyl sulfide distills over. If any dimethyl sulfide remains, the solubility of 9BBN in the mixture will increase, which will become a problem in the next step. The boiling point of dimethyl sulfide is only 37C, but to make sure all of it is gone, the distillation is continued until 1,2-dimethoxyethane starts distilling over, which has a boiling point of 85C. After a while, some white vapors are visible in the apparatus, and the temperature in the head starts increasing to 85C, which means that 1,2-dimethoxyethane is coming over. So at this point, I can stop the distillation. So I remove it off heat, and quickly a solid starts crystallizing out of solution. The solid is 9BBN, but to make sure it's pure, I will have to recrystallize it two times. I remove the short path, and then add 40 mL of dry 1,2 dimethoxyethane. I stopper the flask and set it back in the heating mantle and start heating until all of it dissolves. I make sure that the flask is only lightly stoppered and check it frequently so that no pressure builds up while also keeping contact with the air at a minimum. When all of the solid has dissolved, I turn off the stirring and heat and let it cool down slowly to ambient temperature. I leave it overnight and when I come back, a large crystal of 9BBN has crystallized out of solution. Now I set up a waste beaker and I decant off as much of the liquid as I can. Since it's pretty much one big crystal, it goes relatively easily. Now to purify it even more, I will recrystallize it. So I added about 80 mL of 1,2 dimethoxyethane, and then I set it back into the heating mantle, and repeat the same process as before. To make it go a little faster, midway I poke the crystal with a spatula to loosen it, and then wait until everything has dissolved again. 
I take it off heat, but the crystallization doesn't seem to get started properly, so I gave it a little slap and then 9BBN started to crystallize out. I hit it again and more solid starts to crystallize out. I then put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes and afterward decanted off the liquid again like before. Now I set the flask back in the heating mantle and attach the gas adapter, connected to a vacuum pump. I heat the flask lightly and start pulling a vacuum to remove all of the remaining 1,2-dimethoxyethane. I leave it for a few hours and afterward loosen the crystals with a spatula and leave it to dry more overnight. When I come back, the crystals should be dry, so I pour it all into a crystallizing dish and we have some nice white crystals of 9BBN. The yield turned out to be 8.72 grams, which is 57%. This is lower than the literature, but I didn't do the procedure in an inert atmosphere and didn't recover all of it from the flask. I also used a little bit more volume of the solvent. Anyhow, now that I have the 9BBN, I can move on with the next step, which is making the alpine borane. So I set up a flask and attach a funnel. I store 3.7 grams of the 9BBN and will use the rest for this reaction. So I add 5 grams of the 9BBN and then add 41 mL of anhydrous THF. I start stirring and then add 7.3 mL of 1S levol alpha pinene. I lower the flask into the heating mantle and attach a condenser. I start boiling the mixture and leave it refluxing for about 8 hours. In this reaction, one 9BBN molecule can react with the double bonds of two pinene molecules, where one hydrogen will be donated to the most substituted carbon, while the boron attaches itself to the other carbon, both in the same configuration. It is the stereocenters that were already on the pinene that favor one configuration. After about 8 hours, the reaction should be finished, so I attach a short path distillation apparatus and pull a vacuum to remove all of the THF and excess pinene. I assist it with a heat gun, and after a while nothing more comes over, and I am left with the alpine boron. I then set the flask with the alpine boron in an ice bath and wait for it to cool down. I then remove the stopper and at once add 5.1 mL of levomenthone. There is an initial exothermic reaction and I stopper the flask again. After a few minutes, I remove the ice bath and set the flask in a heating mantle to keep it around room temperature. The mixture has quickly turned yellow and now I leave it to stir for a day. In this reaction, the ketone of levomenthone will react with the alpine boron, forming an intermediate product where the boron stays attached to the oxygen. This creates a new stereocenter where the S configuration is favored, which in this case is the favored configuration when using 1S levo alpha pinene. The pinene from before is simply regenerated as a side product. When I come back, the mixture looks the same, but the reaction should be finished. Since there's an excess of alpine boron, I will destroy it by adding a few mils of 30% formaldehyde and leave it to stir for an hour. When that is done, I set it up for short path vacuum distillation and distill over all of the pinene that has been liberated and the water that I added with the formaldehyde. When all of it has distilled over, I am left with a thick yellow oil with some solid bits. Now it is time to destroy the borane product and generate the final alcohol. So I first add 10 mL of THF and then add 10 mL of 3 molar sodium hydroxide. Now I add about 10 mL of 30% hydrogen peroxide. I add it gradually because the reaction is strongly exothermic. When the addition is complete, I stopper the flask and leave it to stir for a few hours at 40C. In this reaction, the borane part will be removed through oxidative cleavage while leaving behind an alcohol in its place with the same configuration. When it is done, it looks the same, and I now move the mixture to a separatory funnel. I wash the flask with some ether, and then extract the aqueous phase a total of 3 times with ether. I then combined all the ether extracts, and dried it with a bunch of sodium sulfate. I then filter it all through some cotton, and set the filters up for short path distillation, to remove all of the ether. When it is finished, I am left with a thick yellow oil that has a very herbal minty smell. Now I will try to just distill it over to get rid of the yellow stuff and get a clear liquid like the dextroneomenthol is supposed to be. So I transfer it to a smaller flask with the help of some hexanes 
and distill that all over. By accident I distilled over part of the product back into the hexanes, but the yield isn't really too relevant for this test. When the distillation is finished, I am left with 0.83 grams of a clear liquid, which should be mostly dexto neomenthol. I ran a TLC on the previous yellow product, and on this product, but it seems their outcome isn't that different. Since dexto neomenthol is a constitutional isomer of menthol, and not an enantiomer, it will have a very slight difference in the distance it travels on the TLC plate. Therefore, we can see that the expected spot for dexo neomenthol does not line up with the spot for commercial racemic menthol. Also, the conversion to dexo neomenthol is not 100%, and it should also produce levomenthone, which is why we also see a dimmer spot right above it. There's also a small bit of residual menthone, but their boiling points are very similar, so it's very difficult to separate them by distillation, especially with such small volumes. It is possible to do column chromatography, but it's not really worth it for this. Since all of the different menthol molecules also smell a bit different, I can confirm that my product doesn't smell like levomenthone or acemic menthol, though I don't have a pure commercial sample of dextroneomenthol to compare it to. Anyhow, we see that the alpine borane reduces ketones to alcohols, and favors either the R or S configuration on the chiral center, depending on which enantiomer of pinene is used. So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and as always a special thanks to my Rotovap support group on Patreon. See ya!